My name is Erna Schmidmeier. I was born on the 20th of April, 1923, in Odessa, Russia then. That's the house where I was born in 1923. And I'm so happy that I have still this to remember. My mother and father's name was Sonia and Salomon Beaches. I stayed in Odessa till the age of seven. 1929, we came to Danzig because my grandfather was there and the times in Russia began to be very difficult for the Jewish people. In Danzig, I had a very good time. I went to a Polish gymnasium because my mother thought it would be easier for me not to speak German because I was Russian born. But I learned as well German and Polish. I have to show you our synagogue in Danzig, where I, we regularly used to go. My husband had his bar mitzvah there in that synagogue. And just before I left, they started to tear it down. And that is what became of our synagogue already in 1939. Yeah. I lived in Sopot for many years. And that was our synagogue in Sopot where we used to go every Yontif. But it doesn't exist anymore. They built houses there. And that was very, very painful to see when I visited Danzig about 15 years ago. I wanted to see my school and where I lived with my parents where I had happy days. It was very, very sad to leave Danzig. My Parents thought it's the nicest place in the world, but when the Nazis came, it was finished. I didn't notice anything till 1938. In Danzig was a very, very good time because I didn't know anything about it. I stayed in Danzig till 1939 and went on a kinder transport to England to be saved. And I didn't want to leave for England, but my parents wanted to save me. They understood more. My parents stayed behind with my grandfather because no transport would take people over 70. And my grandfather was just over 70. My parents weren't even 50 when I had to leave them. The last picture I have from Danzig was when I left from the Schlachthof and my grandfather was also to, to say me farewell for good and they were pulling his beard and that I remember. My mother and father were crying. It was difficult for them to send me away and I didn't want to come. They packed my suitcase and I unpacked. My father stood three days from five o'clock in the morning to get the hundred sterling for me to get to England. I didn't appreciate it at that time because I, ne I thought I'd see them again, but I never did. I left Danzig already. There were no trains and nothing. From one side, the Nazis were marching in and we had to leave from the Schlachthof by taxi. And we went to Berlin and from Berlin by train to Hanover, from Hanover to Den Haag. From Den Haag, there was a boat, a ship, which took us to Harwich. So when I came to England, I didn't know anything else, only German and Russian. And 
in England without one word of English. I used to point with my fingers what I wanted. It was a very hard time to be on my own without mother and father. Sixteen was then a different age than today. I was really a child. We came for a few days to a British family, twelve of us, and then to the hostel where I lived to the end of my stay. In England, I had quite a good time, but without knowing the language, we went to a hostel, 12 of us who left together, who came together from Danzig. We lived in a hostel in one room, 12 of us. But we were all happy because we had all the same background. Everybody lost their parents and came by themselves. When I arrived to, to England, it was already be almost beginning on the war. It was already black out and I only had perhaps two, three days with light before the war started. It was very, very difficult to sleep in the shelter for a long time. And once a week, we could go to the, to the underground station to have a sleep there because every day in London they started to bomb from 7 o'clock in the evening like a timer it was till the morning it, they were bombing. Our hostel wasn't touched but opposite there was a church which was completely destroyed. I lived in Belsas Park. All those years till the end I kept the dress because I always used to go and visit my matron and everybody. They attended even my wedding. And, uh, but unfortunately, everybody has gone by now. Only one friend stayed alive, my age. She lives in Honolulu. That was in our hostel where we lived 12 in one room and we're very, very happy there together. I came to the hostel, I think it was about winter time, 39. We joined the girl guys already to learn English perfectly already in 1940. I think it's already in March 1940. I'm on the left of this picture. And those friends, only one is still alive in Honolulu. Everybody has gone. I'm all by myself. And I'm, as I mentioned before, I'm already 93 years of age. In England, it was a good time for me. I learned the language and I was there for almost eight years. I had one brother who was in France and he was a Frenchman and he was in Munthausen for 10 months in the camp. So I didn't have anybody in the world who could look after me. And when I went in the middle, I went for training and working as a nurse. I made my matriculation in Hazelmere in 1941. And then I learned to become a nurse and I went from one place to the other. Everything is registered in my identity card, which I received on arrival in Harvard. When I completed my nursery training, I, I lived in Aylesbury, Wendover, better. I have my identity card still, which I received in Harvard on arrival in 1939 on the 25th of August. I think I'm the only one who has it for all those years. And all my dresses, they're written in it. I had to move from one place to the other and always go to the police to have it written where I am and what I do. And that was rather unpleasant, but I did it every, every few months when I went to somebody. Everything was always written.
in the identity card. I left for Paris once to see my brother who came home from the from Munthausen, yeah, weighing 38 kilos. And then I came back to England and I stayed in England. Well, in England, I had quite a good time, even that I missed my parents. I went to school there. I made many, many good friends, which are, unfortunately everybody has gone. I met my husband when he came back from Dunkirk. I think it was 1942. He came and found me in a hostel because somebody must have told him that his sister was together with my parents. So he came to look for me to ask if I know about his sister who is with my parents on the ship in Kladaro. But unfortunately, I couldn't tell him, but I could only tell him my own story. And when he met, met me, I was, still, I was only 18. And he said, I like you and I'll come to marry you. I laughed at him and he left again for in, in the British Army to, I think he went to Sudan from England. And he really kept his promise. And so he did in 1944. He came as a soldier from, the, from Sudan to England. And he was stationed there in a prison of war camp because he knew German, but he was Polish. In 1944, all of a sudden he came back and said, you see, now I'm back to marry you. I wouldn't believe him, but he did marry me in 1945. So that was also a very nice story. Yeah, I'll show you my wedding invitation. Yeah. Very, very good friends of mine in, made my wedding. They lived in a beautiful house of a British people and I had a wonderful wedding with about 30 people who came, all from the hostel, all from the hostel still in the days where I worked with them and lived. And even my matron attended my wedding. And it was a very happy day. And we even went on a honeymoon to Turkey for one week. And then Gerhard had to return to the army because he got off duty for 10 days to get married. And he was stationed all over England. He was staff sergeant and he started his, his uh, military service from in the British Army and he was sent to, uh, to, to Egypt, to Sudan, to Eritrea and all over he served in the army and was even in the commandos and I have got still to remember his knife and all his documents. He celebrated Churchill's birthday in Iraq and uh, he was a bodyguard even of Churchill. And this photograph is all over picture. He's on the left, Staff Sergeant Gerhard Schmidtmeier. My husband worked in Quorn. I couldn't see him much, but I worked the whole week, week to have the fair money to go to Manchester to see him. And I was always in London. That are the medals of Gerhard Schmidt, my, my husband. He was very, very proud of them and he used to wear the medals on his military uniform. And when he got it sent to him by post from the British Army, he was very, very happy. What can I say? I have them framed now in my bedroom to remember 
his service from 1939 to 1945 when he got discharged. He had a commando knife, which he was very, very proud of. Then he served in the commandos, 1940. I married in 1945, and my husband wanted to go back to Palestine, to Israel now. And because he, he had his mother, sister, and brother in Palestine, and I didn't have anybody anymore in the world, because everybody was gone. My brother lived in France, and he stayed there till the end. End of December 1947, I came to, to Palestine. I saw my parents for the last time in Danzig, and I always had the hope I'd see them again while I was in England, but I never did. My parents had to leave Danzig illegally, the back, the back stairs, because they, the police came to arrest them, because they got found out that my brother was a soldier in the French army. So they left Danzig without anything, only what they had on with their clothes, from the Jewish agency, they were sent to Yugoslavia with another a train full of people to Yugoslavia. And then there they lived on a ship in Kladavo for a long time. What I know here about my parents is that they were on the ship in Kladavo and they were taken down after a long time that they were frozen almost to death, the hands, and too many together. And they were put in a camp in Sabak. That's what I learned all in Israel. When I met this man who came to tell me the story that he was saved and that he knew my parents. Yeah. And I know here we know all the exact days when they were murdered and and, and killed. I didn't know that they were killed. I heard from them now and then through the Red Cross. I had a few Red Cross cards which I could answer, but I don't think they ever received them. But they were murdered in Kladavo in Yugoslavia in 19, on the 12th of October 1941. That I got to know when I came to Palestine, not before. Even in Israel, we were invited on the 70th anniversary of from a kibbutz to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the being killed in Kladavo. They had to open their own graves, stand naked, and they were shot inside them. In the night on the 12th of October 1941. All the documents are in Israel. And there were a few young people who saved themselves and they swam to Spain somewhere and they came to Israel and they still live here. They are also over 90 already in a kibbutz and they, they told all the stories about the parents even one came to me but i couldn't hear it because i cried too much and he said that my mother used to mend his socks and that was so sad for me that i didn't i only know his name but i never got in touch with him again it's already so many many years that is the monument here of my parents' grave. That are 250 Jewish people put together in a grave to remember them in Belgrade. That's what I got sent from Yugoslavia to remember where my parents 
should be. But I don't know if it's true, but that's what they sent to me to tell that they left my address, that I'm Erna Beaches and I should have it. That's it. Unfortunately, my parents didn't have any joy in their life and they were just about 50 when they were killed. That's very, very sad now that I'm so old and still alive. This is a photo of my husband whom I met in England. He is originally from Danzig. He was born in Graz in October 23rd, 1970. He came to Danzig as a little child with his parents, Johanna and Adolf Schmidtmeier. Johanna Lamm, from the house of Lamm, is his mother, my mother-in-law. And they lived in Danzig till the end. My, they went with a transport to Mauritius in 1941. A little while before that, my father-in-law, Adolf Schmidtmeier, was murdered in Stutthof. He was beaten to death because he was a Jew. And they left my mother-in-law and Gerhard, my husband's sister, left on the transport to Mauritius and they came to Palestine in 1943 and they wanted us very, very much to come here. That's why we left England and came to Palestine. My husband came one month before me and I came as a repatriation wife to Palestine. In the beginning of 47, the end of December 46, I arrived in Haifa. I even remember the, the ship I came with, the Cameronia, it was the name, from England, from Gibraltar to via Egypt to Haifa. Yeah. It was a very happy time to be here because my husband waited at the port for me and we were united again after a month he left before me. Well, as I told in, in Palestine, it was a very, very hard time and he worked very, very hard and we stayed with an uncle of mine in Pardes Katz before we found a room to rent a room somewhere. Yeah, I went to work immediately and I worked as a nurse. I was a midwife in Ramat Gan, in Ramat Mape, and I got a job immediately because I had my papers from England so it was, we had at least something to live on. It was then one pound and ten, uh, ten, I, Grushim, I think it was the name, and that I worked for a lot till I got pregnant and had a baby boy, and then I stopped working. Now I have two big sons. One is already 67 and the other one is 58. And ever since, I'm here almost 70 years now. The happiest day we had here in Israel when the proclamation came. My husband grabbed me and we went with our last shekels, not shekels, it was Grushim, to Tel Aviv, to stand in Mokrobi, to hear the proclamation. 
It was such a happy day that I never forget it to see Ben Gurion on the steps. It was like our father, our friend those days. Everybody danced and kissed in the street, and that I never forget. And then all of a sudden we became Israel and not anymore Palestine. So forget about Palestine, all the Arabs where we lived in that were Bedouins, they went off from Pardis Cuts and all of a sudden it was empty. And Jaffa became so friendly and it was really a beautiful time. I remember our first trip yeah, to, to Jerusalem when we went and saw the cotton and everything. It was really, we felt all free and good. But before that was a very hard time, a few months they were shooting and bombing. I lived at that time in Pardes Katz, and there was very, very hard times. When Israel started, it was also very difficult, but we were lucky that my husband being a British soldier and released, so we got a shikun. We were able to buy a little house on down payment and it was then only we had to have 100 pounds and it was very, very difficult to get the money. And we borrowed from each one three pounds and three pounds and we got the house and we were so happy. I kissed the floor when we had our house in Ramata Chayal, which is today a very famous place. Uh, we stayed in Ramata Chayal till 19, I think, four, uh, 51 or 2, when we moved to Ramat Gan. My brother then helped me to buy our flat, and that's where we lived up today. It was a very, very hard time in the beginning of Israel, but luckily we managed it, and today I'm the most happy old person. Now I'm already 93 years of age. I lost my husband almost seven years ago, and we had a very happy time together for almost 65 years. I have two wonderful sons which look after me, and I also managed to get a caretaker because I'm 93. I'm a healthy person, but not able to walk by myself anymore. I'm very, very happy now to be in Israel, to have a flat of my own, to have wonderful children and six grandchildren, and even a great-granddaughter. She is a lovely little baby, only five months old now. So I can't complain now because after all the sadness, being an orphan and everything, I'm happy now to be settled. Yeah. As I mentioned before, I was married 65 years and I had a very, very good husband and I was very, very happy with, happy with him while he was sick, so he had to go and I'm still here. אלה שמית מאי, וגמול נא אמו, אמה, בחסדך הגדול, לפתוח לו שערי, לו, לה, שערי רחמים וחסד, ושערי גן עדן, ותקבל אותו, אותה, באהבה ובחיבה, ושלח למלאכיך הקדושים לאליכה ולשיבה תחת עץ החיים. אצל נשמות הצדיקים והצדקניות, חסידים וחסידות, ליהנות מזיף שכינתך, ולהשביעו ולהשביעה מטופחה הצפון לצדיקים. וצדיקות, והגוף ינוח בקבר במנוחה, נכונה בחדווה ובשמחה ושלום, 
כבפי ויבוא שלום ינוחו על משכבותם, נתחיל ויעזבו חשובים בכבוד ירננו על משכבותם, נתחיל עם תשכב ולא תפחד ושכבת וערבש מתך. וזכר וסלמן ותשמור אותו מחיבות הקבר ומרימה בתולעה ותבחון ותסלח לו על פשעיו כי אדם אין צדיק בארץ אשר יעשה טוב ולא יכתה וזכור לו זכירתם צד כזה אבל שעשה ותשפיע עליו לא מנשמתו לדשן עצמותיו בקבר מרוב טוב הצפון לצדיקים כי דכתיב מה רב טובך אשר צפנת לרעיך וכתיב שומר כל עצמותיו אחת מעינה לא נשברה וישכון בטח בדד ושאנן מפחד רעה ואל יראה פני גיהנום, ונשמתו תהיה צרורה בצרור החיים, ולהחיותו בתחיית המתים, עם כל מתי עמך ישראל ברחמים, כן יהי רצון, אמן. אמן. ונקבה לסוניה ולאלה שמת מהר. ותשמור אותה מחיבות הקבר ומרמה ותולעה, ותמחול ותסלח לה על כל פשעיה. כי אדם אין צדיק בארץ אשר יעשה טוב ולא יחטא, וזכור לה זכויותיה וצדקותיה אשר עשתה. Schmidtmeier, a woman of courage, strength, and compassion, a fierce intellect, loyalty, and commitment, has built a beautiful life, family, and community, despite all adversity. She has made untold contributions to society in the course of a lifetime. Erna's greatest source of pride and nachas are her devoted and capable children, their spouses, and her grandchildren and their spouses, and the notable fact that they served honorably in defense of the state of Israel. model of perseverance, optimism, and joy have served as a guiding light for her children and grandchildren and even her great-grandchildren who respect and honor and adore her for the strong foundation that she and her husband Gerhard Schmidtmeier built together. Erna and Gerhard regenerated their lives and celebrated many symptoms. clung to the extended family who survived the Shoah and its aftermath in Israel and around the world. Over the centuries and generations, the family network has been preserved. Johanna Lam Schmidtmeier, the mother of Gerhard Schmidtmeier and Erna's mother-in-law, was born in Gretz Poznan, then Germany, now Poland, on December 4, 1883. She was the daughter of Robert Lam and Bertha Kurzweg Lam. She married Adolf Schmidtmeier and later they moved to Danzig, now Gdansk, Poland. Johanna Lam Schmidtmeier was one of four children. 
The eldest was Martha Lam Abraham. She was married to Oscar Abraham, and they had three children, Alisa, Siegbert, and Betty. They lived in Berlin, Germany. The second oldest was Yetka Lam Heimann. She was married to Illis Heimann. She had two children, Kurt and Gerhard Heimann. They lived in Berlin, Germany. They were both sisters of very meager means, and so Johanna Lam, religiously every week, sent them 10 marks to sustain them from 1912 to 1939, when these families left to Shanghai, China. Martha Lam Abraham and her children survived the war in the Shanghai Ghetto. They settled in San Francisco, California. Martha's daughters, Betty Vagovsky and Alisa Rosenblatt, never forgot the generosity of their aunt Johanna. They repaid their debt of gratitude to the Schmidtmeier Shalev family by remembering their children in their will. Anna and Gerhard, once they became established in the state of Israel, rebuilt their lives and traveled and kept up family bonds. The shadow from the starlight is softer than a lullaby. Rocky Mountain High. What began as a tragedy has culminated in triumph. The children of the Kindred Transport and their descendants continue to network and convene and celebrate their miraculous lives after their rescue from certain death by the Nazis. In 2015, these Kindred Transport children met at the British Embassy and were honored for their fortitude. Many thanks to Bruce Hyman Retain, cousin, who was the catalyst for making this important documentary, and to the next generation who will keep this saga alive and treasure it. When asked the secret to her survival and positive outlook, Erna has explained, Ich guck nicht nach hinten. Ich guck nicht in der Zukunft. Ich lebe in den Tag hinein. I don't dwell on the past, nor do I worry about the future. I live into the day. Erna Vichis Schmidtmeier is a true woman of valor and Aishet Chaya.